Hi and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. In this episode I'm going to show you how to emulate pieces of code from a crash dump that is generated from WinDebug for example. Also the same technique applies to any other database contents. For now we're focused on how to emulate pieces of code from a crash dump. For that we will be needing uh, to have the WinDebug properly set up and also to have the box uh, properly installed, the box uh, uh, emulator properly installed. And I advise you to get a, a stable version that is known to work with IDA, so for example 2.7 should be good enough for our case and that's what I have for this video. So to get started I do have a crash dump. This crash dump has been generated from uh, VM protected 32-bit binary, so uh, that's generated uh, from the demo version of VM Protect. It took a memory dump of a 32-bit application, and the goal here is is to emulate some uh, some of the code here to reveal the imports. Now, the demo version of VM Protect uh, is very simple with respect to uh, the import obfuscation. So let me show you how to do this process manually. First thing is we simply have to load the crash dump in IDA. Uh, we have already covered the, this this kind of scenario before, so nothing special. After it loads, what we want really, we want to convert the whole crash dump to a standalone database. So we can do this by going to the debugger me uh, menu and say take memory snapshots and select all segments. We do this just to make sure we have everything we need when we do the database emulation. So let's wait for it to finish. And now that it finished, we can simply stop debugging. Now, when I stop debugging, what I have is I have all the segments from that uh, memory dump. Uh, let's save the database and just see how big the database is. So it's almost uh, uh, four times to five times bigger than the crash dump. All right. So second step is now that we have box debug uh, box tool installed, so you should have box installed. Second step would be to simply switch the debugger. So uh, switch debugger and we're going to select local box debugger. That's the first thing. Now uh, second thing is we have to configure the box debugger to emulate the database. So we go to the debugger options and set specific options. And this is what we need to do. We need to select IDB mode and for performance purposes let's uncheck this delete image files upon session deletion. We have selected IDB, OK, OK. Now let me jump uh, to, uh, to an obfuscated API. So I know uh, there is some APIs in that sample program. Let me find them. Um, <coughs> let's see. For example, abort shutdown. So here maybe. OK, so double click. All right, so this is apparently the first obfuscated API. If you've worked with VM Protect before, you will recognize this. So how can I emulate and see what is this, what is this API? Let me mark this Alt-M and call API1 for now. Now, all I have to do is simply put a breakpoint, press F2, and start running. And already we are debugging and emulating contents of the database. And now I said simply uh, single step F7. And here we are. Now we transition to the VM protect section. So we went from the text here to somewhere in VM protect. And it's doing what it's doing. It doesn't matter. Just let it uh, do what it wants to do. Keep on stepping. Eventually it will transition to the actual API. And here we have it. It basically calls get version. So I'm going to recall the location and I can, of course, there is more post-processing. We can script it. Maybe this is for the future. I can do that. But for now, this is actually get version, for example. Let me rename that segment to .text. And there's another API call just here as well. We can recognize it going from text to somewhere in VMP. As well, all I have to do to emulate this piece of code, simply right click, set, uh, set the entry point. Since we're in an emulated environment, we don't care really if we keep on changing the entry point. So it's okay. 
We never cleaned the stack, we just call and then change the IP and call. Eventually we might uh, run out of stack space. So go to ESP. So eventually we, we, if we keep on doing this a lot, we will run out of stack space. <coughs> we should be able to either adjust the stack pointer manually or even control the stack size as well for our emulation purposes. Okay, so same story here, simply single step. Let it uh, let it keep on tracing until it goes outside the image uh, image boundaries. Eventually, it will exit from the whole image boundaries, and that's our heuristic check. Basically, if we step and we, we step out, eventually, we will assume that we are in uh, we discovered the API. So that's another API, and you can see where I'm going with this. We can start to write a script for this. Let's see if this is another API call. That's another API call. So same story, control N. And let's uh, trace it. And this is uh, open process token. And so on. Now, of course, uh, this is not a video about VM Protect or anything. I'm simply, I found something practical to show you how to debug uh, pieces of code in the database. So this is it. Basically, I can keep doing that. Select what I think is a standalone piece of code that we can emulate given all the contents of the database. Then you should be good to go. Now, if uh, what you're emulating eventually ends up calling uh, into the system, like a Cisco or something, then that would be problematic. But you can work around that by instrumenting, adding some uh, with scripting, uh, emulating stuff, and so on. So you, you can do that. But for now, this is how we emulate a piece of code. So one last uh, piece of code maybe I can show you. I think this is another API. Same story, Control N, and let's just keep tracing. Eventually it will go send message. Of course the challenge is how can we quickly identify all those uh, locations that we need to be correcting. And, and again, uh, there are ways, but it's not the topic for today. Uh, great, so so that's it for today. I hope you found this step uh, useful. If you like this video, please like it and uh, see you next time. Thank you